News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. And a jolly good morning to you. This is Newsline, live from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Colombo. One year on, new parliament, one and a half years, new president. What's the report card looking like? From an economic perspective, we have just the right man to tell you all about that, to share with you what's going on and what can be done. Um, and we are therefore delighted to welcome uh, this morning Mr. Malik Kader, former senior advisor at the Ministry of Finance. No better place than that is there, Malik, and <laughs> welcome to uh, the program. Good morning, good morning, Farah. Well, very interesting. Uh, you were talking about a report card, really? and in fact, uh, you had given some uh, points. Yeah. Uh, you have given a, a four and a half yes, I said points out of ten yeah. for the one year report card. Yeah. What else do you think you can elaborate a little bit more to see whether. <coughs> well, yes, I. Uh, th thank you, uh, Malik. Uh, I, said, I thought that I was going to ask the questions, but anyway, we'll let you, we'll indulge you. Um, I was trying to be as charitable and equitable as possible. Uh, and when my colleagues asked me, I, I, I said yesterday, I think it was yesterday on radio, that uh, we have to acknowledge the good things, um, or the positive things. And uh, we can start off with the, uh, the price of fuel, gas, uh, they've both been brought down. Um, we have the right to information bill, uh, which is now in law. Um, good start. We've got the Office of the Missing Persons, contentiously, some say, passed. Uh, the Speaker has signed it through. Again, a good start and uh, sends the right vibes to the international community, community. at large. Uh, very essential when we're trying to attract um, foreign investment. Foreign investors. For us, just to add a little yeah. bit more, you had given four and a half points. You're talking about the good points. I'm sure you're about to talk about the bad points as well. Indeed. But um, I think uh, the freedom for us for, for us to talk. Yeah, absolutely. I was right. going. I was going to save that. To the we're last. talking today. Yes. I mean, three years down the line, if you ask me to come for a program, I'll be very hesitant. Yes. But today, and, and three years before, but of we course, have, we would have. We, we have, have always freedom. been indeed. So, so I, need to, that, I think you need to. You need freedom. to give a couple of more points. Indeed, that, that, that was the last point that I was going to make. Actually, uh, so we have this uh, a new lease of life. Uh, uh, somebody from. Uh, uh, foreign network told me uh, a couple of days ago that I it appears yes so we have a new lease of life we have a new sense of freedom and this government has robustly defended those uh, vital uh, democratic components however we now have the bad points and the bad points are that the people feel absolutely utterly let down uh, because this uh, government was elected on this uh, bandwagon of good governance and they promised to hold those who had uh, indulged in corrupt activities uh, to, to be accountable and responsible. We've had a shocking lack of uh, delivery in those terms. We have people who are remanded and released, remanded and released, remanded and released, and it goes on and on. on. We have people here who um, have um, complained bitterly about the use of uh, lobby firms, uh, especially in the US and in Britain. And yet, today, we are faced with the situation, the information that has come up, thanks to some journalists, that the Minister of Inter International Trade, in this case, uh, Mr. Malik Samarvikrama, um, who has apparently entered into a two-year arrangement with some American firm for not a lot of money. However, it's been done. So people are asking questions. Why do we need PR firms now? Why, you know, we needed them before. So they, we have a situation that they're, they're doing what they accused uh, the other side of doing. Well, and it doesn't make it right. Therefore, overall picture, I believe, out of 10, four, four plus and a lot of other things yet to be delivered. So the Prime Minister and his team have got, you know, they, they need to fill at least five more points. When they do that, 
uh, we'll give them another report card. But in the meantime, let's discuss how, why and how is this economy apparently stagnant. What can we do to fight the new war, the war on the economy? Uh, for us, just before we go on to that, I thought I'll add a little bit more yes. on what you've just mentioned about uh, the lobby groups. Yes. In fact, uh, unfortunately, this term lobby or the lobby groups yes. have been coined to be uh, a bad word because uh, of what happened previously. Yeah. Right? So even if you come up with a this kind of a lobby group, there'll be a, a lot of criticism. Mm -hmm. I personally feel lobby groups are important. Mm. Lobby groups are necessary, provided that we go through the proper process, the transparency has been met. Because I, I saw on one of these programs, they were criticizing the lobby groups, saying that our embassy officials are quite competent to do. But they what, don't what have the network, do they, Malik? That's right, exactly. The, we have very competent people in the embassies of Sri Lanka, in the other countries. But this skill set is beyond that. Okay. This skill set you require from lobby groups are beyond that. Okay. So, lobby groups, unfortunately, is a bad word right now. But I gather we need to master lobby groups to canvas for very important economic benefits for the country. So that is basically what we That's do. right. I mean, I think lobby groups have become part and parcel of commercial and public life. Uh, and uh, one, there is a real need to protect one's brand, one's reputation, the country's reputation, uh, and in terms of com uh, listed companies, you know, uh, their share price and so on. There are very valuable uh, achievements and uses for lobby groups. I don't think we can, anyone's uh, complaining about the what use of them. Yeah. It is the, the manner, manner in it which it done, was yeah. done. Point taken. Um, the economy. I, I met uh, yesterday, I met a, uh, a gentleman who owns a stockbroking firm. And he, I said to him, how's the market doing? He said, what market? He said, 28 stockbrokers, all reporting monthly losses. Is that true? Is that possible? Uh, it's quite possible because what happens is the turnover levels uh, might not be uh, they, they might not be in a position to justify uh, the cost of these stockbroking firms. Yeah. Stockbroking firms are costly. We're looking at turnovers less than 1 billion rupees for a day, mm -hmm. which has to be divided among 28 people. Right. And then you're looking at their bottom lines can't be very attractive. Mm -hmm. For us to, before we get on this particular point, uh, we you're talking about the economy of this country. Well, the country needs money. Like yeah take even an individual or a private company right when they need money what do they do they either go and borrow right i think we are up to our neck where borrowing is concerned hmm. right and i think it is a borrowing is very necessarily a short-term process a very yes, short-term process a, and yeah. borrowing from abroad from other countries or from agencies i mean those are you know bridging finances but if a country is to progress, mm. you need, whether you like it or not, to get foreign direct investment to come into this country. At the so moment, that FDI is uh, appallingly low. It's extremely low. It's extremely low. But uh, I think the government needs to understand, right, and they need to do their homework to see how best we could get FDIs coming into the country. For instance, uh, the Megapolis project. Yeah. We're talking about a 40 billion US dollar investment for this country. Yeah. Now, that's an answer. We yeah. need to simply roadshow yeah. right, <laughs> the megapolis project. Well, if we get 5 billion rupees of this coming, not we're 40, right. yeah. we are not alright, we'll be, we'll be extremely fine. Right. Right? So we need to get those foreign investments coming in. For us, to get that kind of foreign investment, <laughs> we need to go and roadshow. We need to go and talk about the projects we have. We need to give the numbers to all these people. All these things yeah. are slightly time consuming. Yeah. Right? When the money ultimately is to flow down to the country, hmm. you're looking at about one and a half, two years of a very large project. The most effective, efficient mechanism available for the country yeah. to get direct foreign investment or the most expeditious manner yeah. or the fastest manner 
is the capital market mm. right you you show a product next day the money can come into the country so we need we need to promote the capital market because that's the easiest way yeah if you ask me quick fixes yeah that's a quick fix to bring in fdi fdi into the country having said that i must also say what do we have to offer to, offer. to the foreigners i'll For tell instance, you what we have to <laughs> offer in a minute however uh, we we've just been uh, um, a viewer uh, i think uh, the network's working a bit slow this morning so i've got this only now it says lobby groups credentials should be correct the ones who are appointed as different uh, have different credentials people like uh, mr morogoda super singer etc have been successful lobbies and that's uh, absolutely valid point isn't it as long as the uh, you choose wisely uh, not some sort of lobby group that has been set up on paper and registered purely to get money out legally uh that uh, oh, no. is that's that's just illegal um and you know so so it's essential the lobby groups there are good uh, uh lobby groups and uh, there are <coughs> groups that don't have the necessary network yeah, we need lobby groups for the capital market as well indeed we do right i mean in new york london stock exchange new york stock exchange we need to have lobby groups yeah. to lobby investments into the country yeah, but not people who are sort of whose normal job with credentials with credentials, credentials. not people who are whose ordinary or primary job um is um, to run a fleet of vehicles uh, as in the past uh, we had some claim about that uh so yeah good good companies i mean um uh, mrs thatcher when uh, when she first became the prime minister um uh, one firm was uh, credited with creating uh, the the uh, conservative party victory uh, such and such uh, so you know we we mentioned these things because it's international known um but yes we do need them but back to the point on the economy what have we got to offer them quite right now for us looking at the capital markets of sri lanka uh, i i mentioned to you that's the most easiest way to get fdis to come into this country yes. is our capital market ready for that that's a question we need to answer well our capital markets are necessarily i mean our, our market cap is about 3 trillion for us looking at investors foreign investors looking at the region we are tiny and we are very small indeed and also uh, malik if i may say so why is this government uh, so many governments why are they so keen on doing business government surely has no business to be in business they should be creating the roads and the water and uh, all the uh, the infrastructure and making it readily available to facilitate business and to facilitate commerce i mean if you had a financial issue um won't you consider selling off some of your assets i'm i'm, I'm coming to that for us i'm yeah. coming to that right now i'm talking about the size of the capital market we are just about 3 trillion rupees right the closest we have i think maybe pakistan or india india yeah. must be about 1000 times us yeah pakistan must be about at least 40 50 times yeah singapore thailand malaysia must be definitely about 1000 times more than us so mm -hmm. we are not seen as a capital market player mm -hmm. in the region or internationally mm -hmm. right if we invite a foreign fund manager to come in here yeah. what are we going to offer him can he buy 20% of stocks of a company we have we have very small companies it will not satisfy the appetite of the foreigners so the first thing i think the priority for the market is to grow the size mm -hmm. we need to at least grow the size three times than it is i mean that is my personal view by right? 3 trillion at least we should have a plan to grow this at least three times to about 10 trillion we That's need to take it there now to do that to do that we need to whether we like it or not for us we need to take the bull by the horn if we are to develop this capital market we need to bring some of these big institutions in the market sri lanka now and now, let's for, let's find out how we do that uh, after this uh, short break don't go away after all this is newsline
Faraz Shaukutali. And welcome back to Newsline, where we're joined this morning by uh, Mr. Malik Carter, the former senior advisor at the Ministry of Finance. Uh, Malik, uh, we were discussing how to grow uh, the opportunities right. to attract foreign direct investment. Right. For us, we were talking about, I mean, you were talking about um, the uh, Selling private public yes. partnership That's right. at the beginning. Yeah. That uh, government should not be in business. Yeah. Spot on. I'm, I'm with you. For instance, why should the government run hotels? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now they have the Hyatt on their lap. Yeah. They have the Hilton, yeah. they have the Grand Oriental Hotel, yeah. they have now taken over the water's edge, yeah. right? Rather than borrowing money from banks yeah. or from the public, yeah. right? can't they sell a portion of this in the market to foreigners? Right? You, put, you put this whole thing, yeah. I'm sure it will be about a hundred billion or more than that. And that will be a big company. And this is the ideal product for us to roadshow. But if they did that, yes. and the skeptic in me is saying this, if they did that, there wouldn't be opportunities for bond scams. But carry on. <laughs> Look, there'll, be, there'll, there'll be better opportunities here on, on this side. Yeah. And then you're showcasing the country. Yeah. Right? I mean, we are, we, if you we are to showcase the capital markets out of Sri Lanka, yeah. we need to have good products. Indeed. We need to have We good need products. to have something to sell. Something to sell. Yeah. Now, now, these are things which will be ideal. Then I, I don't know Sri Lankan Airlines. I've not seen the numbers. Yeah. Right. Those are things um, for us. You need to get expertise. Yes. Whether we like it or not, we can't run these things. We need to have that element of expertise to come. What you, you mean is professionalism. Professionalism exactly. to come in. Yes. Right? That extra edge yeah. is needed. We have the skill set, but we I don't think we can compete with that extra edge yeah. which is necessary for us to do. Take the banking sector. Yeah. The banking sector is reflected only about 30% in the market. Right? 70% yeah. is still with government. Yeah. Insurance sector. The biggest insurance company That's right. is still with the government. Right? I, I mean privatization is certainly a political and a dirty word today. Isn't that what the government should be doing? To to uh, sell off uh, the, the, to sell off the management of these things to not companies uh, not and enter into private pa uh, public partnerships exactly where where the professionals run it yes and uh, also you, you bring in more money you do a private placement you bring in money into the company yeah right rather than borrowing yeah. right you can get equity you okay. can you don't need to give control but you can certainly give management and then as quite rightly you said we get the public private partnership to come we we benefit from the private partner from from the private sector yes. to gear yes. right the assets into right. profits of the government indeed and that's what should be done so do you foresee some sort of um, the creation of a uh, of a sort of a Tamasek model where you you ha it's a big it's a big outfit so that you can invest in in there and so on to consolidate all the bigger assets or would you just sell, well enter into different types of um, uh, PPPs with different people, like you say, the hotels. So do you, and do you go and find yourself a partner, one partner to run all these? Because surely one, each hotel on its own, perhaps is not attractive enough for a foreigner to come here. Spot on, yeah. Well, for us, um, it, it is always good. I mean, these are things which need to be deliberated across the table. I don't think we will have answers for this. We need to have uh, basically. Is there anything managers. wrong in giving control, or there's nothing really wrong in giving control to whoever, as but long as they uh, they are they're doing their job, right. they're making money, creating opportunities, employment, and so on. I think the first phase would be to give management, right, right, and then after that you create value. To the company for instance if a company was valued at maybe 10 yeah right with definitely with private management you should be able to value the company yeah. definitely more than that yeah so there's actually value creation also coming in now for instance take the banks for us only 30 percent of the banks are in the market whether the financial sector is represented in the capital market is a question mark mm -hmm. 70 percent of that is still with the government and for a while now trying to say that we should basically sell all the assets yes we we, because we need to uh, the, shouldn't the government keep hold of uh, the basic utilities like power and water and so on? For us, even that is big. 
Yeah. Right? You're looking at power, you're yeah. looking at water, electricity, uh, fuel. That is huge, right? Yeah. That is still with the government. I think we need to get an input from the private sector as well on those things. But it to might uh, suddenly spiral out of control. No, it's not control. You don't give control. You, 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 I mean, you'll be better off giving I'm talking management. about in prices. What, what happens uh, if we sell off the uh, fuel industry? It's not selling off. Basically, you, you give management. Right. You might be able to get better results. Right. You might be able to get more... Uh, but but it, then you're it, it'll be more efficient. Yes, it, it'll be more efficient, and they'll be also more productive. Right, right. right? Where the country is concerned. Yeah. Um, how how far off do you think we are away from uh, achieving these matters? Do you think they're already on? Uh, um, have we started? That is the stance which has to be taken by the government. As mm -hmm. I told you, for us, you need to take the bull by the horn. If this country is to develop, we certainly need to have foreign direct investment coming into this country right we can't we can't be saying that this is ours only we can put our money into this and but again uh, I, I don't want to be the party pooper here but uh, you know a foreigner coming to into Sri Lanka today he's got a slight problem um, in search of investment he can either deal with the BOI or there's something new according to some of the pa papers called the agency for development but research as I may and try as I may I haven't found anything uh, to say that Parliament has passed such an uh, agency into operation but there is a de facto if you like uh, office for the agency of development where do these foreigners come and where do they go and who's in charge um. In fact, maybe this might be even a part of an extension of the BOI. I, I'm not sure I to, to, to comment on yeah. what you just mentioned. There yeah. might be an extension of the uh, BOI. Of course, if that's the case, you don't need uh, any uh, parliamentary approval. Yes, if it is, it is an extension uh, of right. the BOI. So for us, what we need to do is we need to, if you are to, if you are to grow big, if you want to Sri Lanka to be big rather than being this size, we need to move towards Sri Lanka becoming a financial center in the region. Forget about Asia, in the region. I think we are properly placed for that. We are properly placed for Sri Lanka to be a financial center in the region. Even where the markets are concerned, where the capital markets are concerned, we need to have very creative mechanisms available, like what Singapore and Hong Kong are doing, to get foreign companies to get listed here, for uh, foreigners to start trading in Sri Lanka. You see, that's the kind of uh, creativity you need to take these markets to the next level. But we, we have a very, uh, uh, you know, when, we, when we're talking about having professionals here and government entering into public-private partnerships, uh, and surely we must also uh, have um, loads of integrity uh, to go hand in hand with this and vision and so on. But when we have uh, uh, the minister, Marik Samarikram was the minister in charge of international trade, and when he does things like, it's, it's only a small item, this, this appointment of this lobby group, but the point is they, they put out press releases for all sorts of jolly things. And in the light of that serious accusations about the previous government, it would have been whiter than white had uh, Mr. Samarikram uh, deemed it fit to put out a statement that we're not talking about doing it for every procurement but this is contentious and when it's contentious we need to address that uh, and how come why do we what, what is the situation Manik that we end up with ministers in key positions who who are clearly uh, have got vested interests why can't we have people who are committed to the job what what's the problem in your in your view i think um, for us that's there is no very short answer for that yeah. that that's that's a matter which needs to be debated yeah and to answer your question for us if one is to expect these things to happen from a regime change yeah. i don't think it is going to happen Mm. It is going to take a little while because we are talking about governance. Yeah. We are talking about people, yeah. right? You may bring acts of parliament and all that kind of stuff to regulate uh, to regulate all these uh, uh, issues yeah. we are talking about, right? But 
for us. Yeah. There's no amount of rules and regulations. Yeah. Are you going to make a crooked man straight? So you need to have good people. Back to the March the 12th declaration. <laughs> it's, uh, think before you vote. Yes. But then, right. but then party leaders only give you, they, they're giving you the same bunch anyway. And so you, we're in a situation where we have to choose between, uh, we to choose one or two uh, from, uh, from a bad uh, box of apples. Yeah. So that's why for us it's not going to change tomorrow. No. If one expects it to change tomorrow, it's not going to happen. But then, I think we need to take steps today, if we need a change. Well, we need to change today, if we are going to have a better tomorrow. Right. Um, and, and, and in fact, programs like this, yeah. focus groups, right? Uh, groups which criticize. I mean, we have the freedom today to come and criticize. So we need to have more criticism on these things, where we put people right e on e track. Every time our guests say this, I half expect uh, the glass to shatter behind us because, uh, you know, we've been stoned, we've been Claymore bombed. So the good news is it's not happening. And you don't buy Claymore bombs from the <laughs> corner store. Yeah, uh, so And we do know what happened. And when the time is right, we will put that out. It's <laughs> not that we don't know. We do know. You know. So, uh, we so do you think there's hope? I think there is hope. I think there's well, what hope. should they do? Uh, should they continue with these, uh, uh, all these sort of cases? They've let the people down, by the way, you know, because they haven't held anyone accountable. All these sort of partial cases going on. And um, media has always been criticized, and we don't expect them to stop now. Um, we have the Prime Ministers openly naming journalists and uh, being highly critical, and the Western powers that be uh, appear to have missed the point. Um, and they haven't done anything about it. Anyway, w we don't need uh, to do going there. But the, the, the should. How, what should the government do very quickly? Why should they? What should they do to get this economy going again? Yeah, for us, talking about your, your the, the points you've raised about, I mean, people would basically there are little things you can you can miss out in doing things. But then, it's good to come and say that not that you made a mistake. You can correct them. Okay. Right. For a very well. Well, well uh, that's wonderful that you're saying it. We have the Auditor General who's uh, talking about uh, the Central Bank yes, and so on. Action. And now they are criticizing the Auditor General. Yeah, now that's not, that's not very... It's not cricket, is it? <laughs> it's not cricket. <laughs> right. Well, you know, um, um, uh, Manikadi, it's, uh, it's good to be here and good to have you here. And, um, of course, uh, uh, at the moment, it's another Malik who's uh, in the news. And uh, it's the, his last name isn't Carter. Uh, but thank you very much for being on Newsline. It's been uh, lovely having you. It's a pleasure being here. And um, as we go forward, we hope that you will tune into Newsline. We're here Monday through to Friday, 7 till 7.30, and discussing the issues close to you. Take care. Have a great day. And God bless.